sound right yeah okay perfect um, so first of all let me introduce myself my name is Jan Jongboom and besides being the blondest guy in this whole audience uh, everything I breathe and do is basically Firefox OS in my day job I'm working as a Firefox OS evangelist for Telenor and Telenor is a big telco telecom company and maybe an, a name that you might not associate with open source. Now Firefox OS gives Telenor a unique opportunity because Firefox OS is built to create smartphone experience at extremely low cost. You guys might not have known that. I mean, we're in Singapore. You guys have the highest income per capita in the world. But in a country like India, we launch phones for 31 US dollars, smartphones. For th that's, that price point just drives me crazy. It's amazing. If you want to see what you can get for that money, I got a bunch of Firefox OS phones. I actually used one myself for the past year and a half. I got them available. Just speak to me at the after party or the BRGS or the bar, wherever I'm getting to be. Um, and half my job is actually half of the time that I work for Telenor, they donate to the Mozilla Foundation. And within Mozilla, I'm one of the core contributors to Firefox OS. I write code in JavaScript, C++, on the Gecko site, or uh, at the UI layer. Um, I'm also a peer for the keyboard, so if you try out Firefox OS later when you talk to me and you go bitch about the keyboard or it doesn't do word prediction right, I'll slap you in the face. And, <laughs> and the last thing that I'm doing also Firefox OS author, I'm writing a book called Firefox OS in Action. Uh, so today's talk is not going to be about Firefox OS, but if you're like, yes, Jan, shit, just like seeing what you can do with the whole platform after today, makes me enthusiastic, I wanna get involved with that. Get the book. Uh, if, you, if you're nice to me or follow me on Twitter, actually I will, I will tweet a discount code for you as well, so it, even, so it wouldn't cost you shit. Um, now I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm not gonna fly 12 hours just to go to Singapore and talk to you guys, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was actually in uh, Bangladesh just the other week, and I realized that in this photo it might be very hard to spot me. <laughs> um, but being there is, is amazingly cool. Um, if you look at like internet penetration, uh, if you look at the state of smartphones, how many smartphones are there, how are people connected, in a way, it's, it's 20 years ago. No one walks around with a smartphone yet, hence the importance of Firefox OS for us, because we want to bring that to them. And internet happens on crappy devices in general. They're back 20 years ago, before the mobile revolution, where you had limited input methods. It's just a keyboard, just a mouse, uh, and those were the only things you could use to give information to your computer. And if you think about what your mobile phone these days contains, you know, all these sensors, vibration sensor, etc., it's amazing. This, these are the things that you want to use at this point because they blend your mobile device and the world around you. Your mobile phone is no longer a little stupid box or a little small computer that sits in, in your front pocket. No, it's something that can actually improve your life by responding to that. Uh, then if you think in the same way for the web as JavaScript developers, the web was not really made for that. The web, ex the web started to exist 20 years ago as well. And vibrating your computer is not really something that should be okay. <laughs> You know, these days when your computer vibrated, we, we figured, okay, there's something wrong with your, with your PC. But if your phone vibrates, then yes, okay, that's useful because it might have a new message. Um, so sensors get more and more important. 
For example, um, how would you do this if you would not have an accelerometer? How would you detect that this thing is falling? <laughs> on your phone, not a problem, because you can measure the forces that are on the phone. On your PC, a lot harder. If you look at the list of sensors that are, for example, combined in the iPhone and the Galaxy S5, it's a lot. Ambient light, humidity, even the battery, your battery has sensors. If you look at your battery, you see two pins on the outside, those charge. The other, one of the other pins is a data pin that just gives information like, oh, I'm currently this full. Sensors everywhere. Actually, the only sensor that I could think of that uh, the iPhone doesn't have at this point is the band sensor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because all these sensors now get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, because we want mobile phones and we want to we wanna fix it on price, this is actually the main enabler of the Internet of Things. If you have an Arduino or Raspberry Pi board, all the modules that you plug into that are mobile phone sensors. That's the thing. You know, this whole Internet of Things movement, all these projects that are in Kickstarter these days, all these hardware projects, got like six laying around at home, they can only work because these sensors have become so incredibly cheap. And these sensors can now be built into anything. And, I mean, people have been doing great stuff with that. Like, truly great. So here are three of, of my favorite uh, mobile apps. Moves, which is now bought by Facebook. You have the device just in your pocket, and based on the accelerometer data, it sees whether you're walking, or you're cycling, or you're running, and it will map that out. Completely automatic. I think this is one of the greatest ways where you can blend in the outside life, the things you do in real life, with your mobile phone. Instant heart rate. This is, um, if you're later at uh, BRGS or you're in the bar and you get a bit drunk uh, and you have instant heart rate, that means that people are going to do little competitions, like who can get their heart rate the fastest or who can do the lowest. Uh, and instant heart rate helps with that because it uses the camera and the flashlight to see uh, your bloodstream pulsating. And based on that, it can measure your heart rate just by holding your finger to the camera. Super cool. Sleep cycle. Use accelerometer to detect your sleep cycles. So after you've been drunk and you've done the instant heart rate and you do sleep cycle, you'll realize that when you're drunk, you sleep like this mm. <laughs> instead of a normal healthy pattern. Um, now, this stuff is all amazing, all great, fantastic. I mean, it's great to live in an age where applications like this are a real possibility. There's only one problem. This shit is boring. Truly boring, seriously. I mean, we've seen this for seven years, you know? We got the iPhone seven years ago. We have Android for five years. Um, like, why do, we always need to, why do we always need to be so serious? You know, one of the few apps lately that came out that I was actually enthusiastic about was an app that can measure this. <laughs> and this app is called Send Me to Heaven. It uses the sensor data to see if you throw up your phone, how hard did you throw it? You know, why so serious? We should have done fun stuff with our mobile phones. Should not do, like everyone is sitting around here yesterday. We're talking about, oh, we need to vertically align our CSS in the middle, you know? No, you know, we're here also to do great stuff. We have the super cool device in our pockets. Let's do something really fun with that. Um, so today, what we're going to do, and I know I already talked for nine minutes. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of the sensors that are in all of your phones. And then we're going to twist that a little and use them for something that we're not supposed to. Now, the great thing is that all of the examples that I'm going to show you will be in JavaScript. Um, all but one of them you can run on any Android smartphone with Chrome or Firefox. So you don't need to buy a Firefox OS phone from me or uh, get something you can already use, leverage your own phone. The only downside. The only, only like, thing I say here is like, if you throw up your phone in the air and it falls down, then you're on your own, you know? <laughs> Not me. Um, the other, and this, 
the first one, if you want to do everything, then you got to have Firefox as fun for us. But luckily enough, they're very cheap. A Wi-Fi connection. Um, the real purpose of a Wi-Fi chip in your phone is to provide you with internet connectivity. But I mean, that's boring. I, I had it 10 years ago on my laptop. So I figured, what else can you use this for? Now, the way that the little bars in, so let's say you're connected to a Wi-Fi network. It shows you little bars, like how, how strong is the signal at this point. And then I figured, if I can see how strong the signal is, that means that that's kind of like how far away I am from the device. So why not change this and use the Wi-Fi sensor to play hide and seek? You know, a kid goes into hiding, it sets up a Wi-Fi hotspot. Then all the other kids go on their phones, they scan the whole area, and then they get the strength of the Wi-Fi of the Wi-Fi signal. Then they can do some manual triangulation by spreading around up until they all have a signal and then closely move in. You now you're probably like, Jan, are you crazy? Is this seriously is this gonna work? Yes, it's gonna work. So after I've been doing all the talking, we're actually going to demo this. Now, if we want to do this in JavaScript, there's 10 lines of code. What it can do is, and this is unfortunately at this moment a Firefox OS only API, is the Wi Fi manager. And it can ask the Wi Fi manager to get me all the networks. And that means it starts to iterate or scan around and then returns me all the networks. I can find the SSID of the person that is in hiding. And then I can get the relative signal strength, which gives me a value between zero and 100%. Already been there. Another sensor that, that is kind of lame is the device light sensor. You can use device light. Device light is being used that when you're in the sun, it will up the brightness of your screen. If you're in a dark place, it will drop the darkness of your screen. I mean, lame. You know, this is one purpose you can do. And then I figured, um, if you have a source of light falling into the light sensor, you can adjust that by putting your hand between the, between the light source and the sensor. And this way you can manipulate the value of the sensor. And then I remembered an old Big Bang episode uh, where Sheldon is playing the theremin, which is a musical instrument that emits a wave and by putting your hands in between the wave, you can actually alter the pattern. Now, we can do this as well. If you set up an array of phones that all have a device light sensor, by moving your hands in between, you can manipulate the device light sensor, and based on that, we can generate tones. So you can fake and we can fake a theremin using just a bunch of Firefox device devices. Um, if you want to do that, we have to create in web audio an oscillator. Do I say that right? Yeah. Um, an oscillator is something that will just emit one tone constantly. And you can change the frequency based on the device light sensor, the values that come from device light. This is an API that's also available on Android, so you can build it there as well. If the device light changes, we set the tone, and based on that, by moving your hand up and down, you can change the frequency of this thing. It's gonna be way, way cooler if I actually demo it, but hey. Um, Third thing, a gyroscope. Um, one of those things you can do with that is, for example, it measures rotation. And it measures that in three axes, front and back, tilting to the left and to the right, and the way that you position the device, so actual rotation on a flat surface. Now, one of the things you can do with that my favorite, one of my favorite things is called Doodle Jump. It's a, a little game on iOS where you hold the device up and there's a character jumping up and down. You can tilt to the left and tilt to the left to right to control that. And then I figured, like this, this actually comes really close to real life. What if I can use the track, what if I can use the data from the sensor to manipulate something on screen, but like fully? So we can draw in 3GS, we can draw a 3D model of a phone on the laptop, then get the gyro data from the phone, send it over a WebSocket to the computer, 
and then manipulates the x, y, and z axis of the rotation thing in 3GS, and that way map a mobile phone that's flying somewhere in the real world and show it with the, ex with the, exact, measure with the exact rotations, with the exact tilting on display, and it looks basically like this. Not real phones, this is just 3, 3GS rendered model. We can do that by just setting up a simple cube, a bit longer, then it's wide, a little bit thick. We can put a front and a back image. This stuff will all be on SlideShare later, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we set up the cube. Now, based on the data that we get from device orientation, which is the JavaScript API to deal with the gyroscope, we can set the rotation of the cube based on that value, and that way, when I manipulate the device in real life, it will also show on the screen, all 3D rendered. Um, another one. This is the last one of the things I'm going to show you here today. The accelerometer. Real purpose, for example, is turn to mute. Um, it, it measures the forces that are being applied on the sensor. So if your device is laying flat on the table, there's a force of 9.81 meters per second per second down, because that's the gravity. Now, when you turn around the phone, the sensor is the other way up, and it figures that it has 9.81 uh, acceleration the, others, the other way up. And this way, you can easily detect, like, oh, someone turned over the phone. I should stop ringing or should stop the notification. And then I figured something. If you can measure the forces that are being applied on the phone, you can also use it to visualize juggling. Because what you do in juggling is on the z-axis, you throw it up, and then it will come down. And then you throw it up again, and it come down again. So if you would plot the values of the z-axis in a graph, and then you use multiple devices, multiple sensors to do this, you actually have a nice visualization of all the juggling that's going on. Actually, for that, you need a couple of lines of code. We can set up a listener for device motion, which gives us these values, and then we plot the absolute value of data.c, the value on the z-axis in the graph. Got to look cool. Now, you might think, Jan, you know, it all sounds pretty cool, but I have a little problem with this. And it is, a lot of these things are, are pretty awesome, like a juggling visualiz visualizer is very cool, but I don't want to have that with a phone. I want to juggle with balls or, or with fire or something like that. Like, how do I incorporate that? Well, if you have a Firefox OS device and you look at the architecture, then on top of Firefox OS device, there's a Linux kernel running. And on top of the Linux kernel, there's Gecko, the render engine of Firefox also on desktop and Firefox on Android. And on top of that is an HTML5 UI. And that means that the HTML5 UI is the only thing that you can interact with on the phone. That means that Gecko contains all the phone APIs from Wi-Fi, as we saw, to telephony, to sensors, etc., all already there. And it also means that if we, if we remove the UI, then we're stuck with a little device that runs a Linux kernel and Gecko. Now, why is that cool? Well, if we don't have a user interface, we also don't need a screen anymore. So what you can do is take a Firefox OS device, use a screwdriver to remove the casing, and then you get presented with a little motherboard. This one. It's actually super small. You know, it's, it's less than the size of a credit card. It's actually so small that if you would want, you could build it into a banana. Um, now that we have a little dev board, then, then okay, now what? There's nothing running on top of that, no UI. So what I built, and I presented this two months ago at JSConf EU, um, is a little thing called Jan OS. It's <laughs> it's, um, Jan OS is a Firefox OS alternative that is used to run on devices without a screen. So it, you can flash it on top of every Firefox OS device, and then remove the screen, and then have a little operating system, you can hardly call it that, that does a couple of things for you, like automatic Wi-Fi management, connecting to 2G and 3G networks, 
And they can write JavaScript to write like little applications that run on top of this. For example, you can write your juggling visualizer there that communicates over WebSocket to a server and then build it into one of your juggling balls. These are the things that are possible. It's very easy. So if you see something today that you think like, shit, Jan, that is awesome. I wanna, I wanna do something with that. But I either don't wanna break my phone or I wanna build it into something else. Jan OS is your friend. And the first, and if you show me a device running, uh, running Jan OS, at some point I'll buy a beer for the whole evening. Um, so that was uh, 17 minutes of talking. And now I know you guys are all very anxious about actual demos. Yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the, the talking for a bit. Um, <laughs> we're gonna see some fun stuff. Just mirror my display. So um, what I brought today are three Firefox West devices. And now I need three volunteers. So I need three people that could come up on stage and help me with something. That's a chance to play with Firefox. Yeah, I mean, and, this, and is like, this is like the I first step that you can yeah. do. Come on, yeah, three yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, there yeah, you go, yeah. there you go. <laughs> okay. Here you go, just hold it like this. Well, hold it also like this, and hold it also like this. So now we're gonna do a little hide and seek. So I need one of you to walk over there, one of you to walk over there, and one of you to walk over there. So I have the three devices, so I got the Wi-Fi hotspot set up here. And as you can see, some people are a bit close, someone is the farthest, I guess that's the person in the back. And now if you guys, move slowly to, uh, back to uh, the speaker desk. Then we should see the values coming up and that's the moment that it would find me. So please come. Values go up, values go up, values go up. And I got one person that, now this one is bitching a bit, but. And now we're back here and everything is 100. Yay, you found me. <laughs> Someone says, very surprising, like, it worked, wow. Okay, so um, the next thing what I wanna do is make a little music. I'm gonna use these Firefox West phones again for this. Um, I used to have an audio cable. Was it this one? Two, two, two. All right, so plug it in. Now the thing is that this emits tones, and some of these tones might be a bit loud and a bit uh, high. So excuses for that, Lori. <laughs> um, okay, so let me try with uh, one device first. So let me put the sound a bit, bit over. So I have currently one phone. Okay, now one phone is not really impressive, you know. So we can do this with multiple phones. Now what we can do, what's actually funny, is that the oscillator does not have one tone in which it can generate. It can generate like little variations. And on each of these phones, a different variation will run. So now when I set this up. <laughs> All right, yes. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the best job in the world? Standing in front of people, just waving your hands. <laughs> um, so I wanna, I wanna show you uh, a little bit of how that works. Um, we're looking at device lights here. Bigger as well. 
So what we have here in the front is basically the server. And all of these devices have a Wi-Fi connection to the same access point. So not to the point here, because for the hide and seek, you don't need to be connected to the network. You just be able to scan it. Um, and they emit socket events and then gets sent here. And now, if you get a device light event, and we didn't see the device before based on the device ID, we can create a new oscillator, check out one of the tones that we have, sine, square, sawtooth, whatever, based on that, and then connect it and then start it. And this way you can basically add unlimited number of devices. They don't need to emit sound themselves. There's a little server, a little Node.js server running in between that translates that information into something that you can hear. Um, now for the next thing, it was visualizing um, movement of the, of the device itself. And this is a 3GS workspace. And the moment that I now turn on the phone, building up, the moment that I'm turning up the phone, let's check if my server didn't die. The moment that I turn up the phone, it should actually show on screen. Now, the god of demos is very hard to please, as people might know. <laughs> I'm actually connected, so that's good. I'm hoping I'm seeing some events coming in. I'm only seeing device light events. Now, I'm gonna show you something that's called debugging Firefox West devices on the fly, and you can do that using, it's actually super cool, if you think about it. It's called the Application Manager, and, um, the app manager allows you to connect the Firefox developer tools to any mobile phone. Um, it looks like this. Now I can connect to this phone and now I have all the applications that I'm running here. And the application that I'm now interested in is the device orientation. Now when you click debug, you have the complete Firefox developer tools available running on this phone. So if I, for example, uh, in the inspector change one of the nodes, it will automatically also be reflected here. Plus I also have a debugger, which I can then use to see if there is any data coming in at all. So as you can see, there's no data coming in. And I don't know where it is, not. But we, of course, you can restart the whole thing. Okay, so we got one. So I have the phone here, live, laying around. And I can put it on a flat surface. Now I use the data from the accelerometer to control the movement. So if I do, and the other way around as well. Or if I flip it around, <laughs> and now I hope that the other one now comes online as well. So now we got two, and the third one doesn't want to play anymore. I probably broke it. Um, so now I got two, and I can yeah, like show that it's not fake. I can do fucking amazingly cool stuff with this. Play it around, rotate. Now the only thing that's missing here is the actual rotation. Because if I rotate it like this, or like this, nothing changes yet. Uh, we can show you, and I can also show you why I disabled that for this demo. So, uh, first of all, the problem that we have here is that even though these devices are uh, positioned the same way, they still point differently, and that's because the sensor is not, uh, how do you call it? I don't know, in the, in, the, in the factory they made some mistake, and it's like, okay, we don't need to calibrate these settings. But other than that, if I now disable one of these, 
and I rotate it. So I have both rotation and this way and this way and this way. And you can see that it gets very, very messy on the screen. This is cool. You can use this data in your own game, in your own thing, or just use it to practice your 3GS skills like I did. <laughs> um, so the last thing, it was the juggling visualizer. And now I'm going to do the dangerous stuff with dropping phones and stuff. Um, so I need to close this application. So what I do is I measure the forces on the, on the z-axis on this phone. When I start this one or this one. No. It's true what they say about the demo gods. I'm actually very happy that I already got so far. Um, okay, so what we have here is one phone. And as you can see, it's pretty stable. And the reason for that is because I'm not doing anything with this. Now, if I make a sudden movement, <laughs> this is not even the coolest part. So now I'm gonna, because now I'm gonna show you something. Like, if I drop a phone, then you're gonna see what happens. And this is actually interesting because this is free fall. This is a moment where there's no force being applied on the thing and that's because it gets down. The, the, the ground doesn't hold it back. Um, let me show you again. So that's pretty cool. And based on that information, so like, okay, if you're juggling, you're throwing a phone up in the air first So if you're juggling, you're throwing it up in the air first and then catch it. And you can see that same pattern. Oh. Hope it didn't break it yet. Oh, I broke my server. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> it's better than breaking the phone, you know. Um, so when I throw it up and then catch it, you can see that there, for a little while, there's basically zero force applied, and this is the moment I throw it up, and this is the moment that I catch it, basically like that. Um, so now, when I start throwing this up in the air, you see a pattern emerging. So based on this, you can basically see like, oh, okay, I threw it one, I threw it one two, three, four, five, six times up in the air. Now, this gets more interesting the moment that you do it with Two phones. So actually, Thomas told me, no, this is not real juggling, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Motherfucker. Um, <laughs> Thomas already, after last time, two years ago, I was also at this conference, Thomas invited me again, so he knew what was coming. Um, so now when I do two phones, let's do first one, and then the other one. You can see that based on this information, let me stop. You can see that I first threw up the phone that is now listed in orange, and then I threw the one that's now listed in blue. That's basically what you do when you're juggling. So, <laughs> this is the moment of truth. <laughs> okay, so I have two phones. And we can see the whole pattern emerging on the screen. Now, this is cool, it's only this x-axis, you might even do it on other axes as well. Uh, do it on alpha or beta. Cool shit. So, visualizing juggling skills here. And if you want to do this, build it into your own things, get a 5 access phone, break this little board out of it, and start hacking something together. Let me go back to my presentation now. Yeah, there's the guy again. He was also very enthusiastic when I showed him this demo, that's when I made the video. Because there, oh yeah, so get hacking, you know, get a phone that has the latest Chrome or has the latest Firefox. Most of these demos also run fine on Android. Um, I actually practiced the juggling first on my bed, 
So when it fall, it would not like totally drop that. Uh, use that sensor data to do something while thinking out of the box. You know, build something fun. You know, we should not like constantly try to build something that is useful. Useful is boring. You want to do stuff that's fun, stuff that you can show to your friends, like, hey, look at what this crazy Dutch guy did and what I now copied and also have her. And that's the stuff that I want to do. Now, there's one more thing. <laughs> Should have put on my black turtleneck. Um, so one more thing. So as I said, this little chipboard you can use to build into other devices. Now what I have here is one of these things. This is um, a camera that we built in Telenor in the research group that I'm part of that is based on Firefox OS. It's a small, tiny camera that has one of the mobile phone boards in it. Firefox OS stripped off of it and Yano is on top of it. And because we don't do anything with it anymore, it has a month-long battery life. And during this month, you can go to a certain URL, it will wake up the device and make a photo and send it back to you. And if, you're, if you don't do that, it will just automatically take a photo every X seconds or 10 minutes, and you can use that to create super awesome time-lapse videos. Now, this device has been running here for the entire duration of this talk, so I can go to the stream that I set up, because this is you guys in this room. <laughs> and now I can go back and I see that the guy here in the front is constantly filming me. Um, and this way I can like go all the way back up until the moment that the talk started because then the light was still on and I can slowly see, you, see all you guys coming in into this audience. So first of all he was asleep and now he's making photos. <laughs> yes, applause, welcome, yes, thank you. Yeah, this is the fun stuff that I want to see when, when people are thinking about hardware, thinking about like doing great stuff out of the box. This whole little camera device was built by us together in a month and a half, including the 3D printed design and the PCBs in, in, inside. Actually for this device, because I needed to bring it on my Asia tour, um, everything in here is soldered together, which was kind of a problem because I needed a Wi-Fi connection because I didn't have a SIM card. And I, an hour before my talk, I installed a Wi-Fi connector with duct tape and a little piece of paper with some uh, copper on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it later on this talk. Um, this is stuff that I want to see. I want to see people do crazy shit with their phones. All this, this boring productivity apps, things, you know, step aside again. Think of 10 years ago when you started programming when like showing like hello world on a screen was a freaking most amazing thing. You would call your mom, mom, look what I did. You know, at least I, I know I did. You know, that's the stuff, that's how I learned to program. And now with all these new phones that have all these sensors, for the first time I have that feeling again. You can with very little code, you can achieve amazing results. Stuff that actually blends real life and computers. And I think that is what everything should be about. And with that, I wanna thank you all. Thank you, Jan. I told you he's gonna hide stuff around. <laughs> okay, questions for him, I'm sure you have. Okay, so there's some cool stuff. Um, can we source just the hardware of those phones without the screens and, and use them, say, in place of an Arduino or something like yeah. that? Um, I mean, so what's my question? Is it about Arduino or? Can we source the hardware? Oh, yeah, um, so what you can do is basically all this stuff now runs on JavaScript. If you don't really care about JavaScript, um, then you could do it on any hardware platform that supports sensors. Um, if you do want to do it in JavaScript, then your best choice is to buy a Raspberry Pi. Because in a Raspberry Pi, you can flash Firefox OS. And if you have the accelerometer or you have the gyroscope, then it will also be exposed using the same APIs that you use in the phone. So if you don't want to break a phone to get like a hardware platform, get a Raspberry Pi, flash Firefox OS on top of it, and then you get a small embedded computer that you can control using JavaScript. All right, thank you. I believe there was a question from here. Yes. Uh, I would like to just verify whether you can use your phone to 
something like a reflector apps where you can project the screen on your uh, mobile yeah. to the browser. Is it possible for this? Uh, um, it depends. If you, it depends a bit on the operating system. If you're handy with JavaScript, and I mean, every operating system has a screenshot feature. So that means that every operating system has a way of getting the data off. I don't know if it's possible in Android. I know that if you're a bit handy in Firefox OS and you just hack it in between of the graphics card and the moment that we send stuff off, then you could totally do it. Um, but how it is on other platforms, I cannot say, to be honest. And there's always the other solution, just put a video camera on top of it. 